Chris, if you can put the video up for us. So if you can go ahead and just play that for everybody. I go go be sick. I just like looked through my Walmart history and I found this like um, Walmart order from two years ago for the whole month worth of groceries. 45 items cost $126. A whole month of groceries just for me basically. But I did notice this reorder all button and I wanted to see how much it would cost now. Now? This order of 45 items for one month would have cost $414. That is four times more. How the fuck? How? Like, what? Now, this is from the US, I think, right? It's not from Canada, okay? Uh, everyone here, you guys do your own groceries? Yes. yes. Right? Have you noticed an increase in prices on certain things? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. It's completely insane. Another thing that these companies are doing is they're reducing the size of the package. I was just going to say that it's not even the pricing that I've noticed. It's the milliliters and the size of the yeah. packaging that it's going down. And it's like it's going up for smaller. Or the quality yeah. of the produce. Like, yes. Everything. So like uh, cookies, for example, my little girls, they love President's Choice, those decadent okay. chocolate chip. They're now this fucking small. They used to be this big, okay? And they've increased the price, they've just decreased the, uh, the size of it and the packaging. Another thing these companies do, let's say if you buy uh, salad dressing, okay? Let's say this used to be the, the original container. You'll get the same container, but down here in the bottom, see this dimple? It'll go halfway through. Yep. So now they're giving you less product. So there's other videos that I've seen, I've actually looked into it. What some people are doing is, they'll go and buy groceries. So let's say they buy like a, a frozen bag of like mixed vegetables, right? And it says 800 grams. Well, they weigh the bag and it's like 430 grams. I've seen that as well, yeah. And there's no, no one regulating this. No one's making sure. And they say, oh, this all has to do with COVID. It's bullshit. It's gouging at this point. Okay, but I have a quick question. And like, maybe you can like put me in my place or correct me. So you know how we talk about like the pendulum swing with various subjects. So before there were grocery stores and main hub grocery stores like Walmart, Snow Frills, whatever, there was bakeries, there was butchers, there was, you had to go to five different places to get what you needed, right? Yep. To get bread, For meat, sure. meat, whatever. All yeah. All that stuff. Cheese, whatever. Exactly. Yep. But then, you know, us being consumers, we want it quicker, faster. We we accepted these big, large chains, and this is now the effect of the pendulum swing. It's not because we it's not because we wanted everything quicker. Like cheaper. It's because they it's make it more accessible cheaper. for us too. Yeah. It's all it's, in one area. It's also cheaper. It, yeah. And the only reason it's cheaper, it's buying power. But is it now cheaper? Like, isn't it? Isn't it just about the same price as going to a butcher than going to grab a pack of meat? If that's what I'm saying. It's like going to the bakery. I'm sure to go to a farmer's market or to a butcher is more expensive, but it is at least you're getting what you're paying for. It's better quality, it's most likely. But the, the problem is, is that when these big, huge, they're called big box stores, yeah. right? So when they first started off, you were getting a better deal. So if you bought, you know, whatever milk, if you went to your local grocer who only had one or two locations. He doesn't have the same buying power. Correct. Whereas someone mm -hmm. like Loblaws will buy like millions of liters of milk every week. Yeah. So they get a cheaper rate. So you were actually essentially saving. But now what they've done is, because of that, they've caused all of these mall pop places to go bankrupt. So yeah. now, you, now you don't even have the option. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you have the option I've always of going, been about you know, like supporting small businesses. If you can support a small business, go for it. Because Walmart, no frills, anything that's PC, whatever, it's like a monopoly, right? Like, oh, they're huge. Chains. Sure. But, but the, the mop-up places... But they're killing the small places. The mop pop places are gone. Look at hardware stores. So hardware stores before, they'd be like a local one in your, in your town. Now it's all Home Depot. No, dude, Home Hardware got like kicked out of Canada. Then they came back briefly right before, I think it was like 2015, 2016, they opened a few locations. They, because they're mom and pop, their prices had to obviously be more expensive, but their knowledge was a lot greater than the people yeah. at Home Depot, right? Yeah. But they went, they slowly went out of business eventually. And it's the same thing in the cannabis industry. Right now you have people like 
Valley Butts, Canna Cabana, all these main mm -hmm. in uh, all these main stores that are all corporate now. And then there's little guys like us, and there's very few of us now, mm -hmm. very very few. And it's because these bigger guys are coming in, and they're able to do backdoor deals, backdata deals, and then get cheaper pr products for better person. Unfortunately, sorry, go ahead. Oh, my dad had a variety store in East Toronto. Okay. Uh, in the 70s and 80s, mostly. And I remember how uh, Max Milk came to pretty close to where our store was. We were just a small store called Star Variety. <laughs> and my dad actually uh, posted all these prices on very cheap for bread and milk, and uh, they eventually left. So that was... I was very proud of him. <laughs> you know, uh, nowadays though, to find some of these boutique grocery stores, mm -hmm. like do you guys know who Pusa Terry's is? Yes. So Pusa Terry's is, is very high end, yeah. right? That one up in Yorkville and so on. But you go in there, you get a little, a little block of cheese for 30 bucks or 40 bucks as you're paying for, you know, they have different products, right? So different grade when it comes to the quality of it. So those places do stay alive because of the rich neighborhood around mm -hmm. them. But if a local, if a person, let's say here in Oakville, was to open up just like a, a one location grocery store, he's not gonna survive. Because no one's gonna shop there. Because the price at no frills are way cheaper, right? And then you've got chains like Loblaws. Loblaws owns a superstore, right? And what's it, is it no frills? No frills, Loblaws, superstore. Shoppers. Yeah. As well too. So that's why in shoppers. So yeah. the, the gas stations are also with PC, which there is you part go. of them. So yeah. these guys have a fucking monopoly. Yeah. Right? And the, even the head of the family, um, he stepped down uh, mainly because the stuff that he was saying, people didn't like it. So we had to step down being the president, right? Because when they were talking to them about price gouging. So he was not president choice anymore. He was not the choice <laughs> of No, he, he, he absolutely wasn't, right? So these, yeah. these people know what they're doing. They know that as Canadians, we don't have options, right? So where are you gonna get your groceries? Well, you have like, no choice. Like just last weekend, so we went to this uh, bakery called The Greenery down in Brampton, okay. and their bread pricing was honestly just about the same as any grocery store. But the preservatives weren't there. It's all natural, it's freshly made. And I'm like, okay, I'd rather spend the extra gas to go to a bakery, then down the street to a butcher, then down the street, you know what I mean? Just like. You're getting the better quality and like we talked about last time look at the the vegetables and stuff that are coming out of these places they're they're like rubberized now even some of the sauces i don't know if you've seen some of the videos the bacteria in the sauces you pick up a bottle or a jar of sauce from the shelf at a grocery store and it's moving by itself because of the bacteria that's in it so you know the rubberized stuff when you told me i was like i don't know you didn't so, uh, you didn't believe me yeah, i know so you I didn't. bought i bought avocados from costco and when i cut them open they were like rubber inside. Oh. You can't even eat that shit. You just can't. So the problem is, is that our government, they just don't give a shit. So companies like Loblaws, right? They're owned by the Weston family, right? So they donate millions of dollars, supposedly in campaign money to these governments who are running right now. So why would they bite the hand that feeds them? True. That's the way it is. So we live in a consumer driven society. Every week, we spend the money that we make. Almost every day. And these corporations have, have made it to such a point that we've become re you know, reliant on them. Like people order fucking like bananas from Uber Eats. Yep. Or like peanut butter. Or like scotch tape. Like, what are you doing? You no, know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I had to do it for like two weeks in January because I had like a medical issue and I couldn't like drive or leave my house or anything. It wasn't COVID, it was something different. And I had to raise my iron because I lost a lot of blood during that situation. And the amount of money I spent just between like Uber Eats fees yep. plus how expensive groceries are. So you were ordering groceries from Uber Eats? Yeah, yeah. because I had, like I couldn't leave my house, right? So yep. I had to order it. And it would be like, as much as I tried to order everything at once, there's always one thing or the other that you forget, yeah, especially yeah. when you're alone and you're under medication. And then you get charged for it again. So it was like a good $400, $500 in a week of like ordering things that I needed. And yes. just for myself, one person. And the thing with Uber too is when you order, they actually put a 10% hold on your order. So if you owe say $400, they'll hold 440 on your card so that in case your order goes over and they have to pick a replacement item that's more expensive, that they're not being ripped off. And then you get the money released to you after a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And like the newest thing, I don't know if you've looked at this, is ice cream. So Klondike and Drumstick, 
somebody left their drumstick ice cream saw on the counter out overnight by accident when they came out the next morning after like over 12 hours of it sitting on the counter. It was didn't still, melt. Didn't melt. It was still fully formed. So they're oh, like, this yeah. is so ice cream. I, I don't know if it was Klondike. I know the one that I saw was, was drumstick. Was Selection, oh, which selection. is a brand from Walmart. Yeah. So it's ice cream, an ice cream sandwich, right? So the lady left the entire box out and put one on the plate. And then the following day, like 24 hours later, it hadn't even melted like a drop. Yeah. So it's not even ice cream, it's more icing. That's what it is. Yeah. Right, because it's cheaper. And people are still buying it. So, you, know, you know the brand Walmart has called yeah, Selection, selection yeah. right? It's the cheapest shit possible, right? So the sad part is, is that uh, media is not doing enough about it. Our government isn't doing anything about it. And because we are Canadian, we're not the type to revolt. We're not the type to stand up. We're just taking the ass and go, well, well, we'll complain about it. But no one does anything. Like, I know there was like a whole boycott of Loblaws that was going on for a while. People like, oh, we're going to ban Loblaws, whatever. People are still going there. It happened, it was on Reddit for like a week. People were like, for like a week, they were sticking to it. And they're posting photos how dead it was. But if you go now, Well, the thing is, this is not just the stores. This comes from a higher end issue, right? Like there should be like, there's a minister that takes care of like inflation of groceries and all this stuff. But our wonderful prime minister that I don't want to start talking about. Oh, he's a piece of shit. (laughs) We can blame him for that and for not firing the ministers that he should have fired. It's not even just really him, right? The, The problem is all the way through. So it's not just, yeah. the prime minister himself it's from the bottom all the way to the top so a, a lot of these governments pretty much all of them when they come into power they hire the dumbest people so yeah. that so they're not going to question whatever it is that they're doing yeah. they're not going to hire the smartest yeah. person because if they do that guy will take their job over eventually yeah or he's going to expose them yeah so they hire really incompetent dumb people well, also- and so so much money is wasted on bad management on the government side, our taxpayer dollars. I think it's the same with all the job market right now. People just hire the most dumbest people. To but it depends company. where, right? Like no, all private the companies. Company. Not like if you walk into like a, uh, you know, like a clothing store or whatever. It's like it's got three locations. They're not going to hire the dumbest person because that person is going to cost them more money over time. Nope. No? I've seen so no, many no, dumb right. people employee. Like I don't know about clothes, or, but maybe like a law firm. Like I know, like there's law firms, there's like marketing companies where they are hiring the right people. That's because that's like a law. Not firm, anymore. You know? Before but where like, they are. Yeah. But I think what you're saying, Carly, is also because of what's available out there. When I worked at Amazon, okay, that's I worked. True. I worked at when I worked at Amazon. Um, they literally have something called the Olive Squeeze Press. And that is their format to hire employees. And how they work is, essentially, you are a person, you are an olive. I'm going to squeeze you and get as much juice out of you until I can. Once the juice is gone, boom, bye. I'll get another one of you, you're a dime a dozen. So that's how they they work. They would put as much pressure as they could on someone. They didn't they didn't care. I'm gonna be honest with you. They didn't care because they knew that they could get another student right away. Right away. Yeah. And especially with the amount of third party agencies doing recruiting for them, they they didn't and immigration and and that's, commerce, that's what it is. At I'm, the end of the day, I'm an that's, like the, but that's yeah. what's killing the country. So at the end of the day, that's kind of what it comes down to. Certain companies they do do that. Carly's right. If you go into a clothing store. Like, you go into any cannabis store in the Burnley City Center right now, all the kids there say, I don't smoke weed. What the fuck are you working in a can? Yeah. Like, you don't even like, know the so they, will, they hire people off minimum wage, and most of the time they terminate them before their three-month probation so that they have no rights as a worker, and then they get another worker. No, no, I know, but it also has to do with the quality of workers that are available. Yeah. No, but so I- unfortunately, the, the, the workforce that's out there today because of the mass immigration taking place into Canada with, with the Trudeau government. I don't care who you call, if you call Rogers, if you call your credit card, if you call your bank, if there's an immigrant that's gonna be uh, a, a, the customer service rep. Who barely speaks English. Yeah. And you need to and, communicate yeah, over and, the phone. And they will try, with. they train them the best that they possibly can, but a lot of them are, it takes, even though if you're trained, it takes years. So one, one part is the theory part, right? So that has to do with training the person. Then you come to the practical part, which is them learning whatever you've taught them. So that takes years 
But that's right? what I'm saying. Like there but, but, is but, training. You know, there is training, and then there's like you know, like if their IQ and EQ is high, then they can take over the job and they go higher and in skills. the future. Yes, but you know, like I have so many friends that are so skilled and experienced, and like they're street smart, not just book smart, and then they get laid off of their job, and then they don't get any job. Like and when we go into like you know the company, they try to hire people. They hire the dumbest people. Like their skill level is not even like up there. Like they they're not supposed to get the job. Like you know. But you're saying with <laughs> high pay as well. Yes. Yeah, they get the job yeah. because of who they know, not what they. Because know. you know why? Because I think like most companies, management team, they hire the dumbest people, so they will never get up to their level, so they can like stay there. I believe I. You know what? I, I do believe what you're saying to a certain degree, but I also do feel as well. A lot of these companies, like Bell or Rogers. Uh, they don't give a shit because they've gotten so big that where are you going to go? Well, look, what, remember the article I sent you a few weeks ago for one of the topics was, I think it was Fido, I believe it was, all the workers woke up one day and they were all told that if they don't agree to move to a third world, like to a third party, not third world, sorry, third, third party country, they're outsourcing the work, the telephone work. So Fido was still using in-house and callers. They're outsourcing it. So, so the Philippines, in so India, they didn't agree to move to one of the the countries that were offered. Then unfortunately, they were given a, a re, like a termination package or whatever it's called, a severance package. Yeah. And it's kind of like so Bell Bell Canada, for example, they outsource all their stuff to the Philippines. Yeah, it's cheaper for them. Right? It is cheaper for them, and the people there, they try their best. But when you get to the size of Bell Canada, it doesn't matter anymore. They don't give a shit and about also that, like, that has so They much, just don't. That has so much to do care. with the unemployment rate in Canada currently. No, it, 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 it has to do with the C CRTC. This is a regulatory body that the government has, and they make sure that only certain telecommunication companies are allowed to come into Canada. Mm -hmm. So they won't allow, allow companies like Singular or Verizon or AT&T to come into Canada because they know they're going to buy Rogers and Bell like that in two seconds. But it's yeah. any customer service 1-800 number you call, whether it's R Rogers, Bell. Even a, a bank. A bank. Call your it doesn't bank. matter what it right. is. It could be just anything, insurance. I, I, I'm telling you, it's also because of the fact that the, the workforce that's available is all that they have. So... Uh, you know, even when we post positions for the companies that I have, I will get hundreds of resumes a day for people who are not even qualified for the position we're seeking. That's what I'm saying. So you're not. There'll be some guy who's right an resume. There'll be some guy who's an engineer. I'm saying you're applying for like an office position, like an entry level, you know. But he's an engineer in Brazil or he's from India, and it's like because the poor guy can't find work because they don't recognize his degree here, so he has to like drive Uber and then work at Subway part-time, right? So the the way the government went about bringing in this influx of immigrants, they fucked up. They should have done a little bit of a slower pace on a better plan. So now the problem with the country is you have all these people that are here that the government promised all the shit to. None of these people can afford the housing prices here. People who are already living here can barely even afford the housing prices. Back to the topic at hand, food alone has gone up by three or four, 300 or 400% for some of the items. And I don't know how it is in Oakville, but in Brampton, like, did you know that if you're a house owner and you have a vacant house, so you're trying to rent it out to somebody, say it's a three bedroom house, you're selling, renting it for 3000. If you can't find a tenant that you find suitable and the house is still empty, as an owner, you have to pay the government rent. What? Oh, yep. Because there's such that. a there's a housing there's shortage. A there's such a housing fee. shortage. Yeah, a vacancy fee. Yeah. And the vacancy fee can almost run you about two grand a month, depending yeah. on the size of your house. Yeah. So if I have a house and I'm trying to rent it, but I'm not like I don't want to rent it to the first person I meet. You know, I want to kind of do my due diligence. And the house is empty for two, three months. The government will come at me and they'll ask. That's in Brampton. You're yep. Saying. They'll come at me no. and they'll ask Toronto. me for in yep. Toronto too. Yeah. They'll ask me for a vacancy fee, and she's right, and I have to pay it monthly, wow. or I'm subject to. Well, a fine. you know what? I'm sorry. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I agree with it. Here's the thing. I agree with it. If you don't want to skyrocket our rent, do you know how much a one-bedroom basement apartment is in Brampton? Twenty-two hundred dollars. No, no. So, so no. So listen, what you just said will prevent that from happening. No, because that listen. Because that landlord, 
who's charging such a, such a high rate can't find a tenant, mm -hmm. so you have to start paying that fee out of the So pocket. you know what that tenant's going to do? They're going to find six other people to go in on them with the rent, tell the, le the landlord it's just them. Then you have six people living in your exactly. basement. Exactly. He's making three times the money off of it. No, no, that's a different thing. What I'm trying that's to tell what you happens is... At, no, but that's what's happening in Brampton. Okay, to begin with, I don't think in Brampton that is a big issue because most of the houses in Brampton People have 25 Mexicans or Indians sharing a house with because three they can't sell them. They can't get them for market value for one family. No, but they're also gouging these landlords have increased the prices because the the new law that the Ford government brought in is that there's no limitation. I believe for it used houses, to be only four percent a year, two point nine or something like that. It was, and then they said houses that were built after a certain year, they, yeah. they can go as high as they want. Yeah.